What happened to our intro? Cocaine. The cocaine what song. What happened to the, yeah. Cocaine, he still do it? We still got to introduce the show when it come on? We should just, just go right into it. Be like, what's up? What the fuck y'all doing? Y'all here today? What's cracking? So, you know, <laughs> something different like, like that. Mm. We still got the Gangsta Chronicles. You got the average show. Yeah. <laughs> he said, man, you get eight to rap on this. I said, man, eight ain't doing all that shit, bro. I ain't even asking that nigga that shit. <laughs> Eight, was cracking, eight people. Eight will not be involved. Yeah, I know what it is. Another day, another dollar. Gangsta Chronicles. You know how we get it in. Yeah. What's cracking? It's your boy, Big Steel, with journalist extraordinaire. Sworn Baker. Thanks for having me, y'all. Hey, so your boy Puff got a gang stuff going on. Old girl came back to get her money. She said she coming back to get her moolah. Seemed like she got it. Evidently, she did. How long did it take him to settle out? Uh, 24 hours, seemed like. Man, you had to be had some devious shit going on just to let a broad just come and pocket check you like that because I would have told her ass I ain't giving you shit. <laughs> mm. I wouldn't have paid, dog. Not if I ain't doing nothing wrong. I wouldn't have paid, dog. But see, that's not, that's, you can't say that because, like, again, you didn't have some... You didn't have some hidden secrets, man. You know what I'm saying? It's most of the time when, you know, you got all that bread, you know, you know how motherfuckers be like, oh, <clears throat> I tried weed, I don't want weed, I'm going to try this. Oh, that didn't do shit, I'm going to try this. Man, when, when, when niggas be hidden freaky deaky, man, shit, that money have you doing all kind of weird shit. Mm -hmm. And... Unfortunately, we in the day and age of uh, of documentation and, and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So who knows what kind of uh, who knows what kind of motherfucking hidden sh uh, skeletons in the closet? You know that was about to come out. So motherfucker, like man, here man, go and cut that check. And then we're going to sign this confidentiality. You know what I'm saying? You can't open your mouth. You can't do this. You can't do that. You know? But some, you know, that probably was, you know, it probably was the angle from the get-go. You get me? It makes uh, sense, though. Let me, let me say, let me, let me just go ahead and just put it out there that you a crazy motherfucker. And I got some hidden shit. What do you think a motherfucker gonna do? I'm you gonna pay to keep to keep the hush. Well, evidently Puff was out there blowing up people's cars and all kind of shit, man. They <laughs> said he um, blew up the one boy's car for messing with his bro. Kid Cuddy. Kid yeah. Cuddy. Uh, you know, Nate, one of my fellow Clevelanders, man. He tried to take Kid Cuddy out, man. Niggas be doing some mob hits and shit, huh? Yeah, like, yeah. Puff ain't playing. Blowing up your cars and shit. And Kid Cuddy uh, verified it too. That's the crazy part. That part, he said, his car did blow up when uh, around the time that it was accused. So yeah, man. So he never knew till now, huh? I think he probably knew. If that, if he was trying to get at Cassie and then his somebody threatened him and then his car blew up, I think there's a direct correlation. That's not a normal activity. Well, Cassie probably got some red snapper motherfuckers out here blowing up cars and shit. That pussy <laughs> probably good in the motherfucker. <laughs> I think. I don't know. I remember when those photos were going around. Yeah. I'm not hip. Oh, they were around. Yeah, I'm, I'm not hip. Guess he had some butt niggas. Yeah, man. That, I remember I went into this office back in the day when they were coming out, and I was like, wow. Okay. I was shocked. It's unfortunate, they were, man. They were man. graphic. You know, um, coming from the angle of being an artist, it's fucked up what we got to go through sometimes to try to get in a position that we think we deserve. Motherfuckers take advantage of a lot of shit. Especially the women. Um, especially the women. Especially the women. Know, especially the women. Um, and not just speaking on, you know, the hip hop. It's just crazy what motherfuckers, are, uh, the boot camp click shit that a motherfucker puts you through mm -hmm. to... Uh, uh, be famous, like I say all the time. 
the lengths that motherfuckers will go through sometime to be famous and shit nowadays is crazy about how um, you just want to come into the game and be a general artist, you feel me? Or just, you know, your talents of whatever. And it's unfortunate, like I always say, if a motherfucker feel they can fuck you, they going to fuck you. Mm -hmm. Or they going to put you in a position to where, you know, well, Puff has had his accusations over the years. I know Exhibit, the homie Exhibit said that Puff t took him to a gay club. <laughs> Did y'all he hear him talk about that? That was so hilarious. Yeah, I heard him talk about it. I also saw that uh, episode. He was on the homie um, Nori and um, EFN show. He was on the Drink Champs. Mm. And he spoke on it, man. But then um, it looked like Fabulous was kind of mad, though. Cause remember the episode they had Puff on there? And Puff was trying to force him to go to a party with him. Like, you got to go party with me. I don't remember that part. And they was just looking, you got to go party with me. So I guess when Puff said, you got to go party with him, I guess that means you could be walking around with your shirt off or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was them kind of Hollywood parties you used to attend. I ain't never yeah, partake I was going to say, I've never like been to one of those. It was, you know, the, where you had to climb out the back <laughs> window. And what was, they was doing some weird, like, eyes wide shut shit still. I didn't stay to find out. I got to fuck on. <laughs> I got to fuck on, man. I, I, I wasn't going to stay to find what out. What did the Patriots look like? What was, what they look like still? Man, just regular people until they got <laughs> snorting that shit. <laughs> Yo, man, speaking of that. And uh, I did a book with Juicy J, Chronicles of the Juice Man, and I had never heard of this. But he talked about he went to this party uh, where they had flavored cocaine. He said he, he was in this room, and the dude came up to him like a, a waiter at a restaurant. And yeah, that's how I was at the party I went and to. And he had like strawberry... He had strawberry just waiters cocaine. Waiters just walking around yeah, with, with, shit. with cocaine, with just a flavor like yeah. like blueberry, I saw strawberry cocaine. I saw yellow cocaine. I saw. Um, oh, no, like I guess cocaine. I'm just. A, I never heard of that. I guess I've always been just a too normal motherfucker because I ain't oh, never I been invited to none of them type of parties or seen that type of shit, but on TV and the movies and well, shit. Well, I got invited up there through an um, executive that was working at Interscope at the time. Okay. And I went there, you know, I was working in music publishing, right? And, I've, uh, I've known plenty of executives, and I don't know, maybe my, <laughs> maybe my aura or Your something. Your disposition you know, is a little different. Like, right, because you was a rapper. Damn man. Sure, yeah. We like, ain't going to ask him. Yeah, we ain't going to invite eight to the, the Hollywood He might Hills. shoot us and plus yeah, you against the rapper, right. they probably worry about getting shot or some shit. <laughs> some bullshit. <laughs> Knock a nigga out, walk through the door, like, you know, so. Yeah, I've never been, I've never attended or, or, been invited to those. Me neither. Types. I would tell you this: I saw a motherfucker snort some of that blue shit, and a motherfucker did like this. Ooh, <laughs> passed out, man. <laughs> I said, I'm not fucking what would whatever make, that is. What would, what would make a person invite you to some shit like that? Yeah, man, what's the angle? Still, man, you know what it was, man. He was like, man, they having a party, and the homie I had with me. You know, you got a homie with you. Mm -hmm. We should roll. I didn't want to go. We should roll. Mm. I ain't gonna say who the exact. But how did how right. did how did they frame this? Like, what did they say? Oh, this is the crack in this party. You got to come through. Or did they say, oh, it's this just flavored the party. cocaine? Or we was actually party. what it was. We was clearing a sample for a record they had up there. Okay, mm. we was clearing a sample, and so they was trying to get favor amongst us. I wasn't only one invited. He actually invited the owner of the company, and I had one of the homies with me. And he was like, man, he kept. And I said, man, yeah, I guess we would go. So I stayed out in Hollywood at the time. Usually I bailed at the crib. I stayed out there, man. We went, and I thought it was just going to be some normal shit because it, it started off normal as hell. Mm-hmm. Started off normal. Then as the night went on, the shit got they weird. Say, you know, they got motherfucking <laughs> waiters. waiters walking around <laughs> with the little... Yeah, you know... With the little... Trays, with the little, coke. <laughs> with the little trays, with the little... Playboy vest on with the bow ties. No, with it wasn't nothing like that. And I'm a greedy motherfucker. I know they had a badass woman serving drinks. You know they got. I see the, that? Eight. You know they got the open bars and shit like that, like the little open bars. I had me a couple of drinks. It was it was pretty normal at first, but then shit started kind of getting like as the night progressed. So did it really start cracking at like two or three, or Man, was it? This shit started cracking like around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. <laughs> They was getting it in early. They do because at first they was playing. At that's first they was they playing do. rap music and shit like that. Then when that's when they started playing the doom, 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 
<laughs> that motherfucking hip hypnosis ass fucking music. <laughs> then they start putting the laser lights on and shit. Next thing you know, still you wake up asshole naked and the motherfucking chained up like a zim like an African warrior or some no, shit. Then they start walking around. You know they had them lights, they had these girls walking around that was painted too. Like the painted girls, the oh, naked yeah. girls that be painting this shit, they start walking around. That's when I was like, what the hell is going on here? They done turned the party into some old motherfucking, some old blade shit. Niggas with vampires finna come Man, out on your ass. I went to uh, Kanye West, my beautiful, no, was it that? No, it was 808 and Heartbreaks, I think. Anyway, I went to this Kanye West party in LA and he played an album for the, Allegedly for the first time, but he had women there that were all naked. So all different nationalities, all different types of thickness, thinness, whatever. And they were just painted. But it was cold. It was during the winter. So they were all like shivering for like two hours and they couldn't move. I guess that was in their deal. I wonder how much he paid them for that shit. Dude, I had never seen anything they like that. shit. And there was at least 40 of them girls. Dude. Oh yeah, they get at least. Bread. Man, I wouldn't have been out there for no two hundred dollars. You wouldn't been shaking for two hundred. Hell no, the toe. I was I like, what's going on? And it was in a warehouse, kind of like it was just freezing near, hard. Uh, it was near uh, uh, the Grove, like Third and Fairfax. It was over in that area. I was like, what in the world is this? It was yeah. crazy, man. It was crazy. I think some people, man. When they start considering themselves to be geniuses and shit like that, they just get weirder and weirder. And I think they just do shit to people, dog, just to kind of flex their power. Because they got money. Yeah. If I pay enough, somebody go do it. He considered Absolutely. himself a genius? Yeah, Kanye definitely considers himself a genius. Oh, I thought you was talking about Puff Daddy. Oh, nah, Puff probably considered himself a motherfucker with a bunch of money they could do. It. People with money, man... And I'm talking about people with different kind of paper. I ain't talking about a nigga that got a few million dollars in the bank. I'm talking about people that just got real, you know, I would say you got to be over that 80 million bracket. You feel what I'm saying? They just got paper. They do but what you got to remember, man, like, dude literally campaigned that he invented the remix when for years, just in rap alone, there had been remixes promoted with videos by the biggest artists, Public Enemy, Tribe Called Quest. All these artists. Mm -hmm. The Beatles even had different versions of the same song that are remixes. And that's the Beatles from the 60s. So, I mean, it's like, but he, remember how he would always say that? I invented the remix. I, I didn't, I really did. I was like, um, uh, okay. What a bad boy. I don't know. I really didn't get into a lot of Puff Daddy, uh, you know, shit. I'm shocked. Um, no, no. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I banged a lot of Biggie. Mm. I even bang some shine. Uh, should I even bang some Black Rob? Black Rob, bizarre. Black Rob, um, life story. I never got into the the puffy thing. Um, like I said, sometimes I just I just feel like you know motherfuckers just can't live normal. You know, it's okay to live normal. Fuck it. If you got a billion dollars, it's okay to live normal. You feel me? Mm. But some people just put themselves on, and don't get me wrong, you are in a different tax bracket, but, you know, it, it, it's okay. You feel me? <laughs> Some people don't, don't want to be, don't want to have that role. You get me? Um, a lot of people, when they get into the position of having money and having status, it changes who you are. You get me? Um, and most of the time, it changes for the worse. You hear a lot of people... Yeah. Say, you know, I made, I got money, and that shit was treacherous. You get Man, me? Man, I'm going to tell you, shout out to my homeboy, Mr. Mix, from the DJ Mr. Mix from the original 2 Live crew. He told me something, and I never will forget this, and I took this with me through my whole career. Because, you know, I kind of started off with, like, you know, DJ Bobcat first, mm -hmm. then, you know, Mr. Mix, right? So them was the two dudes that when you actually had to pay dudes to get in the music industry, I used to carry them dudes' records and shit, you know? Mm. He told me something, because we met somebody who I keep nameless, and he was an asshole. And I said, man, I never thought dude would be like that. He said, man, listen, let me tell you something. Money just allows a motherfucker to reveal who they truly are. Because when you don't have no money, you're going to be a humble motherfucker. But when you get money, 
you can pretty much do what you almost to an extent what you want to do. Right. Because not everybody has a have everybody ain't got a price. Cause there's certain shit I wouldn't give a fuck how much money you got. There's certain shit I'm not doing. And I could say the same thing for y'all and then probably Brian behind the camera too. It's just certain shit. I don't give a fuck if you got a billion dollars, I'm not doing it. But there are some people out there that will eat a dead rat for, you know, for some money. They'll do, they'll do whatever for money. Yeah, there's a lot of people who put themselves in awkward predicaments or situations to uh, get that bag, you know, what they say today, get yep. the check, whatever. Um, my thing, too, is in the situation of, you know, of Puffy and whatever and the money and Cassie or whatever. My thing is, you know, um, how long, you know, what was it tolerated? You feel me? Yeah. You know, um, because if if I'm not mistaken, they weren't together. You get me? Not for a while. So... Had this been an ongoing, you know, negotiation or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Had she been trying to get uh, a shit from him behind the scenes or whatever? And was this like the last draw, so to speak? Right. Like, I think she just took advantage of that law that came up. And that, that's what I, that's what I kind of say too, because. <sighs> Do you feel like I'm not going to say shit because I finally got out of the shit, right? So now that I'm out of it, I done cut ties with a motherfucker, you know. Why was it like, you know, you see a lot of women go through situations and it's like, oh, no, you know, some motherfuckers go through some horrible shit. And then there's some women who be like, oh, no, nigga, right. like. Nigga, instantly. It, it ain't over. It instantly. <laughs> so you you kind you gotta wonder what's been the hidden agenda behind um well today I'm finna just let the cat out the bag. It's all about money, man. Like I said, some people, man, because if a woman has a relationship with a man and it don't work out, they usually just move on and just go on with their lives. So, right? okay, let me ask you this one quick. Do you feel her statements of what she might have said, what was happening to her, do you think that might be true? Why do you think he just all of a sudden, like, because like I said, this, from what I've known, Cassie, you know, and, and the history of Bad Boy and... It was a long time, right? right? It's been yeah. over 10 years, Yeah, right? Well over so, 10 years. as much as what was claimed to have happened, why now? Why not like... The money, man. Why not like, oh, the first, day, the first <laughs> day a motherfucker made you fuck another nigga in front of him and videotape it. Why not run the fuck out right then and be like, oh, no, nigga, you well, crazy well, as let, fuck. Well, let me ask you this, though. Uh, my guess from what I've seen, not necessarily hearing about that situation, but if the girl is on drug, drugged out, if she's trying to get in the game, if she's trying to please her man, if she's, there's a thousand things that could be going on, none of which are good, but that to me is the explanation. And then if, cause she did tie it into you know, drug use and feeling. I was drugged and yeah. I was just, you know, I was young and, and embarrassed and, and and you know and it could I wanted be true again. And, people and, do everything for money and in reality and fame. I wanted a career, right? You feel exactly. me? I, what you I, gave her. I wanted a career. I wanted to be a singer, famous songwriter. Blah blah blah. Okay, I you you get all of that, but like I said, at the end of the day. um, how much do you tolerate to get to that status of, okay, now I'm here, now enough is enough, and now I want to expose well, it? Well, I guarantee you that it had her career went differently. And I'm not going to say because we don't know what happened behind closed doors, so I don't want people to think I'm just giving Cassie a hard time. But let's say she would have had the same career Beyonce had. Will we even be hearing about this? 
I actually think we would have because I think the environment is different, man. I think for whatever reason, you know, people are being more vocal. And because of that, you're going to hear way more of these stories. I mean, right. as they, you know not, what? it's not, think about it though, Steele. It's not just Puffy and it's not just rap. Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of people. And those motherfuckers, and I'm going to tell you this, man. It's me a being a man that got, me being a man that loves women. I got a mom. We all got mothers. I got a daughter, man. Um, nieces. I got a daughter, too. You know, I, I got women in my... I got, I got a wife. You know, women <laughs> that I love, man. I'm married. If you've done anything wrong to a woman and forced a woman to do something that wasn't consensual, I definitely think you need to pay the motherfucking piper. piper. And I don't feel no pity for you. But if you are one of those women that's taking advantage of the situation... Yeah, well, that's different. Though. They need to have a law. They need to have a law that gets them as well. If you get right. caught, if you get found out to be lying or being facetious about some shit, you need to go to jail. Because um, I, what was the kid from Long Beach Poly, the football player, a girl accused him of rape and won millions of dollars from the Long Beach Unified School District. And she, her, her friend caught her up one day and she admitted she spent all the money. This dude lost his whole career, man. Off a lie? Off a lie, off a girl. She had consensual sex with him but she said he raped her. This dude was on his way to USC, I think, and shout out to Pete Carroll in Seattle. He gave him a trial after he got out of jail, but I saw, I, I read about his that. career I remember was that. over with, man. What happens? Dude, the punter from San Diego or San Diego State that was on the Bills. Yeah. Remember him? That he, only he happened lost a year his, or two he, ago. Yeah, he, only, he came out the same year my son did. They cut him? He got fucked up. His whole career was fucked up because a girl just decided that, oh, I'm going to go get me some money. He got some money now. And yeah. I'm going to tell you what it is, man. These attorneys need to be held liable, too, because what happens is, is these attorneys, you got a certain class of attorney. They just go around seeking out shit like this and go gather the women up. Hey, I think we can get. And the sad part about it, the women don't really get them. The lawyer, the attorney gets the majority of the money. Mm -hmm. Or a lot of it, at least. He gets a nice, chunky piece. I bet you he's hitting, he hitting them for 40 45%. Definitely getting 40%. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Just to go fuck somebody's life over. Mm. And most guys, think about the shit we don't hear about. Most guys got a lot of stuff going on, so they just go, they figure, man, shit, give her $2 million. I'm not about to, if I was the, what was the kid that just got caught in the football team, mom? He just got caught up in the shit with the people, with the massage parlors for not tipping the bitches. Damn what? man, niggas be in some shit, huh? <laughs> yeah, like, you gotta like, do it for not tipping. You can't, man. Get no, you can't get no pussy or no shit nowhere for like it, on the it, normal. You can even go to the bathhouse, dog, like, like to, to the massage parlor, <laughs> and they didn't tip. Now think about this: all of these, man, all of these get women, you a regular got... female man from 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 around the way, man. She ain't gonna cost you too much. She gonna be about a five or a six, man. You know, she ain't gonna be no dime piece. She, she gonna, gonna be no for 20. You. She gonna, do she she gonna, gonna be, be about five or six with a little thickness around the, the little area. Man, please, man. Stop, stop, stop let stop being exploited by the by the by the lifestyle of of you know the dime piece woman and 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 the flashiness and the man, because you get your ass caught up in the man, gang I'm of tell bullshit. You this, at the draft, dude, we was out in Vegas, right? And we all up at this at the top of this thing, man. You know, Chris just signed this contract, man. And it was a woman that was about 32 years old. And when I tell you, she was a woman, dog. <laughs> my wife saw that bitch, and she was hovering around Chris like a piece of meat. And Chris was trying to creep off. My wife went over there. Mm-mm. It ain't going down. Wow. It ain't happening. She said, how old are you? Aren't you a little too old for my son? She's like, give him some of this, man. I'm going to give him a little some of this motherfucker. Chris is mad at the motherfucker. He said, damn, mom, I'm out looking. Give him a little said, some, some of this gray poupon on that <laughs> yeah. motherfucking sausage. <laughs> oh, damn. If you spread a little of this gray poupon. Luckily, man, my son, <laughs> luckily, you know, luckily Chris got going on. You know, luckily Chris got common sense. You know what I mean? And he said, mom, I'm not stupid. I didn't have to do a whole lot. I know how to handle myself. You know what I mean? But I can't be mean to the woman. You know what I mean? Right. But this law is apparently called the... Um, Adult Survivors Act, which I really do think, like I said, man, if you want some, Harvey Weinstein was a sick motherfucker, dog. Mm. He deserved everything that happened to him. 
and more. You know, you think about the um, damage that you can do. You know, a lot of those women turn come out damaged, man. Of course. From that. You know, I, I think any kind of sexual assault, man, should be met with swift and severe justice, right? But I do think that it should be an opposite side to it. I think that if you are found out to be lying, yeah. there should be some restitution paid. Absolutely. And you should do some jail time like the... Um, in the case of this chick that sued the um, Long Beach Unified School District, she spent all the money up, got millions of dollars. They spent every dime of that shit. Didn't have no money to sue her for. Wow. I would have drugged that bitch. <laughs> I wouldn't have gave a fuck if she was on Section 8 right now. She'd have been giving me half that motherfucker every month. <laughs> and I had a bucket in the front yard. I need the keys to that motherfucker. I'm going to make your life miserable. You fuck my life off. And that's the thing I think. But do you think people are going to give you the same? I don't know. You know, it's just it's just so one sided. The situation. Yeah, but check this out with your boy Puff, though, man. Um, another accuser filed a lawsuit against him. Yeah, I've seen that. Said he drugged and raped her in 1991 when she was a college student. Mm. She filed her complaint right before the thing. And I think that's good. If you did get, because see, I'm going to tell you what happens too on right the other before side. before the law expired or something? Yeah. So this right. just happened a week or two ago? Yeah, I'm going to tell you what happens, man. A lot of women that are victims of sexual assault, especially by people that are seemingly in positions of power, they feel like they don't have no get back. Right. And then sometimes they may start blaming themselves, well, because in some aspect, they excited to meet the motherfucker when they meet him. Mm -hmm. And just because a woman want to meet you and take a picture with you don't mean she want to give you some pussy. Very different things. It, it don't mean that sometimes they just excited to see you. How many women have you had eight that just wanted to come and take a picture with you and they do their thing and they go back about their business? I mean, you got to respect, you know, people have to understand, you know, not all fans are niggas. You get me? That's what uh, I'm saying. But then, you know, like, I tell niggas that too, shit. I tell my niggas right now, just because a motherfucker smile at you don't mean she want to give you some pussy. You <laughs> That's know? what I'm saying, man. It's, it don't go down uh, like that all the time. Some people are know. genuinely just like, may fuck with your music or what it is you do, and that's it. I try to treat um, just fans as fans in general. Uh, you don't get a fucking, are you a man fan or are you a woman fan? I just try to treat people like you're a fan. Oh, they got your boy Aaron Hall, too. I'm sorry, eh? God, they did <laughs> My nigga Aaron, too? Man, they said that Puffy and um, Aaron Hall have been out there running the trains on people. Man, Aaron Hall took turns raping her and a friend in the early 90s. And, and look, and they, and they telling the motherfucker while they got a pit down, they telling her, don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> don't be afraid. Oh, <laughs> like, don't be and named in the suit as MCA Music Entertainment and Geffen Records. That nigga said, shit. They were they, also named as defendants. What, what, did, mm. what did he tell her? When he got her in that dark room and shit, they cut off the lights on the motherfucker. It's just all in there. <laughs> all you hear is a nigga going, don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> don't be afraid. <laughs> don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, baby. You know what, though, man? The thing <laughs> is... Like I said, if, if people was out there doing all that devious shit, dog, because I'm going to tell you something. Man, nigga, you can't, man. When you put yourself in them type of positions, man, it's like I always thought that was some nasty shit anyway. A motherfucker's just sharing the same broad, man. You, you, you didn't do no trains? Hell no. I wasn't never with no in, shit In like Cleveland, that. you didn't do no trains? Uh, man. Never, man. I was like, a solo boat. I do my dirt on my lonely. You know, you in a couple of <laughs> I do my dirt on my lonely, dog. Man, through the little, you know, the little dang thing. Never, man. Never, ever, 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 man. You were clean, yeah. you were clean as a wood. Cool, that's why I ain't, cool as a fan, man. That's why I ain't cool worried about fan. nobody coming back with no mischievous stuff against me because I'm a very vanilla motherfucker. There ain't shit on me. If the shits you know about me, shit, go tell it. Shit. I ain't cause I'm um, of course the way these motherfuckers get down, I'm real vanilla. I'm square in the motherfucker. Yeah, man. Mm, mm, mm. Sometimes it's just man, like it's cool I said, it's um so you got you got them you got them you got them men out there, man. They extra freaky deaky. Especially that's what I'm saying. Money <clears throat> reveals who you truly are. If you a freaky motherfucker dog, you get a few dollars, you can reveal you can go. Oh, yeah, you're you gonna go pay you're gonna pay somebody to do some freaky. You can live any man. fantasy you want out. 
Any fantasy Definitely. you want. If you got so if you got a few dollars, dog, anything you want. If you want a fat bra to lick on your chest while a, a skinny bra <laughs> suck us, your toes, you can get some it. Some of us try to remain normal <laughs> in this crazy motherfucking world and society. Um, and like I tell a motherfucker all the time, it's okay to be normal. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. You ain't got to have, you know, 10 females, you know, hopping on your dick off the trapeze and shit, you know. <laughs> Niggas want to dress up like, you know, uh, circus mater Yo, what's up shit. with your boy? Remember your boy, uh, what was his name? Uh, the broadcaster dude. He was dressing up with a... Uh, just another like a woman, Marv Albert. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. You, you remember like, that? It's like, still, some you people remember have that? Some, yeah. Like some people have some hidden agendas, man. Some people just freaky, dog. Hey, I'm gonna bring up the lyrics for your boy Aaron Hall's song. Don't be afraid, <laughs> le, le, man. Leave my nigga he alone, said, you'll man. You'll be saying daddy to I me. I already got him, man. You'll be saying daddy to <laughs> me. Boy, please don't hurt me. That, that, that was <laughs> this is my first experience, baby. Hey. Make it feel all right. Don't oh, worry, baby. Man. Don't be afraid. And what he say after that? Don't be afraid. He says, when I lay you down tonight and I squeeze and hold you tight, everything will feel all right. Don't be afraid, Don't baby. Don't be afraid. When you start to scratch your mm. moan and mm. your problems mm. are long gone, Don't let it happen afraid. right now. Don't be afraid, girl. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Jump up right now and give me one of them. Don't be afraid. <laughs> get it still. Get it. <laughs> Boy, these lyrics got new meaning when you think about this shit. <laughs> these niggas is crazy, man. Is Get them still. And you know some. Hold on. Did we go say? Why? I some, have you all to myself. You can put all the other guys all on the shelf. No need to run and no need to hide. All the doors are locked, baby, and I have you inside. He that's how about he did. Up. They got her in that. They got. They was in that <laughs> room. The shit went click. Listen to what he said. All you heard was that. Hold on. Listen to what he said. Was that a Teddy Riley beat? No. He said you can yell and you can hit me. It just makes me horny. Ain't nothing but a love thing, baby, between me and you. So just give in, baby. Don't worry about a thing. Now, the flip side of all this. Why? Mm. What if somebody just used those lyrics and made up a story? That's the crazy thing. Yeah, that's how they doing now, Dave. That's what I'm saying. He said, when I get through with you, there's nobody else you would want to go to. I put all men to shame. Remember, baby, this is all a nasty man's game. I never really figured to speak them lyrics before. That nigga's a pervert, dog. Why are you, why you read the, the lyrics, man? Why you want to bust out the you lyrics? You want to bust out Ryan, the lyrics, old them, man. nigga, man? This is what he said. These his words, not mine. <laughs> if your oh, boy was man. smart, I would have damn sure played this shit in court, been like, listen to this deviant motherfucker. <laughs> I don't even know. Do Aaron Hall even got any money right now, though? I don't know, man. He did do the uh, the guy tour recently. Man, you know them them you know them crooning niggas, man. Be they you they be know staying on the road still. Man, I don't, he probably yeah, get about on the road. Two hundred a show. But that was them, you know. That was them wanting to be, you know. That was them hip, you know. The Aaron Halls, the guy, you know. Man, the, he, the, the guy just Joe the C's and all. Man, them niggas was they man. They was running through them. Man, mm. they was definitely man. It, man, you know what though, dog? I'm gonna tell you something without naming no names. They just did a show at the Forum. It was either this year or last year. I was on the road. With, I ain't going to mention no names because the homies, I ain't get the homies in no trouble, but I was on the I road. Mean, the, won't you hum one of their lyrics? <laughs> won't you break? I ain't going to hum no Don't be afraid. Won't you break, uh, but, break out the lyrics right now. I'll tell you just, one thing I saw, man. Aaron Hallam still. <laughs> I would tell you one thing I saw. We was up in Seattle, man. I think I know this story. Saying, and the chick was I think saying, I know this no, story. This is, not the, this is not the one with the pimp. Okay. Can, I get, a, the can, one. can I get a little hum of one of the I, songs? I'll tell you all off the camera. <laughs> they rappers. But, <laughs> Let me get a hum. Let can me get I a get a hum? I'll tell you the illest thing I saw. We, on the, we in a Sprinter van, right? It's a girl up there giving one of the homies some dome. Her mm -hmm. phone keep ringing. Okay. Her friend is right next to her giving another of the homies some, some dome, right? Mm -hmm. All the thing on the bus. It's about five dudes on the bus, right? The girl pick up the phone and say, y'all got to be quiet. And she pick up the phone. I'm going to be home in a minute. You know, I'm over my, I got to drop my friend off. She's been drinking. This is a dude you're talking. Somebody yell out, that bitch over here sucking dick. <laughs> oh. Why is she on the phone with her dude, man? Wow. That's pretty bad. That's, can you imagine what happened to her when she got home, dog? How do you get your way out of that? 
Mm, mm. She telling everybody to be quiet, and everybody was quiet for a minute. Then the one dude said, that was some hater-ass shit, wasn't it? A lot of hate. That's a lot of hate. But man. just imagine, she go go home and kiss on her man. Did you have fun, baby, at the concert? Yeah, man, not if he heard that. Not if you heard that. You hear some shit like that, man. A bra's clothes got to be out on the sidewalk when she come home. Ain't even no explaining them after no shit like that. Yeah, it's a wrap. That's all bad. Yeah, I, I think that's a different situation than than the exploits of 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 Mr. Combs of what the uh, yeah of what these situations are. Yeah, this is a lot uh, different. I, I I like I said I don't know. I, um, you should be able to um, live a normal life without uh, the exploits. But like I said, you know, when you uh, get the tag of celebrity status, sometimes that changes people to feeling like you know, uh, to a certain extent, privileged to be able to do certain uh, things that you probably would have never in your life tried or even right. identified with if you were a normal individual. But you know what, though? The thing is, man, let's say you start doing some real deviant shit like that stuff was already inside of you. I don't think no motherfucker just because he get a few million dollars decide, well, I'm going to start doing this. You've been wanting to do that shit. Well, I think it's, it's similar to me. That's what I see when I see on TV when they talk about the serial killer dudes. It's always in them. Mm -hmm. They just needed the opportunity or they needed the confidence or whatever they thing happens to where they're like, oh, today's Once the they day. do the first one, once they get yeah, the first one, it's over with from there. So I don't think well, it's any different. It's, it's, sometimes motherfuckers don't know how to control power. You get me? That's what it come down um, to. Yep. And... When you be when you're fortunate enough to be in a situation to where um, your talents or your 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 exploits or whatever put you in a position to where you know you sitting on a hundred million dollars and you got a company and employees and a lot of people look up to you as this this motherfucker right and and being a black man in that position. You know, coming from, you know, not being a, a a suit and tie corporate motherfucker. You get me? Um, I was a I was just a regular black kid, you know, and I got into this music shit. Whatever, I was fortunate enough to where I could touch a few things. And you look up, nigga. I got a bank account with two hundred million dollars in it and a hundred employees and. That sense of if you don't know how to control, you know, that power, it puts some niggas in a situation of, like I said, you'll put yourself in, in predicaments to where you don't know how to deal with right. being in, you know, I could order up 10 bitches right now and tell them to do this and do that. I can make a nigga go do that. You get me, dude. I, can I was make in a nigga walk from here to Timbuktu to go get me a box of Popeyes chicken and come back. Yeah, those are <laughs> those are the exploits of of to me <clears throat> a nigga who don't know how to control his power because well, now I want I want to flex on motherfuckers. You get me, and you don't hear them hidden stories nah. from the workers and shit. Oh, this motherfucker made me do this. Or oh, this motherfucker did this. Or oh, do you know this motherfucker held my check and I couldn't pay my rent? Right. And I've oh. seen it, dog. I've seen people flex their power like that. I've seen uh, um, take homies on the road like the DJs and refuse to pay them just and have a pocket full of money, dog. Like have not some money, $60,000, $70,000 in their pocket and won't get a homie his $2,500. Why? Just be, and they making them wait. No, that motherfucker got to wait. Right, man. right, right, right. It's, it, that's just the sense of power of control I want to have. Because my nigga done did his job, mm -hmm. but you the motherfucker that I want to show everybody else that I can control by a string. Mm -hmm. Now, he's got his money, and he got his money, Well, if he, he ever got noticed his money. The homies that's with him that ain't doing shit that's just there. Them motherfuckers getting paid off top and they ain't even doing shit, but the motherfucker that's playing your music for you every night, you got all this money in your pocket flossing it. 
throwing money, you you don't do three dollars in the simple motherfucker. You get me? It'll be the motherfucker, you know, coming in here to cut my hair every. I'm gonna make him wait to get his check, or it's the nigga who setting up my motherfucking equipment or whatever, whatever. I, I, nigga, I'll pay you when I feel you. And that type of shit. And homie come at you just so humble, like, hey man, I gotta pay my, you know, my mom gotta pay the thing. You think I get that, motherfucker? Don't you see I'm busy? Right. They go and throw three thousand in the crowd. Go throw three thousand dollars in the crowd, dude. Instead of giving the dude his twenty five hundred dollars, shit like that used to make me want to beat motherfuckers' ass, dog. I mean, but that's where you start getting these. Um, that's the power. That's trip. that's where you start getting these uh, these hidden tales yeah. that come to light. You know, like they say, uh, uh, whatever you got hidden in the dark gonna come to light. Um, that's, right. that's what happens eventually if you that type of motherfucker. Some people don't believe in karma. Uh, some people do, uh, but it's just a situation. I don't give a fuck how far it go back. You know, you murder a nigga twenty years ago, they might didn't find you back then. But look at how, <laughs> they look gonna at, find look, you now. You get me? They on gonna DNA find you DNA and this motherfucker finally talked after thirty years, and because people can't hold water, and and especially when you don't been treating them like shit. And that's what's probably happening right now. A lot of people that got treated, that treated people like shit is getting their penance right now. And the fucked up thing about it is that if you were always had this motherfucking um, tag of being a fucked up uh, boss or whatever, um, all those people who had a tight lip, or it's just like when a nigga go, oh, this nigga in jail now. Now everybody going to come out and say, oh, well, the nigga did it to me, too. Right, right. Oh, well, shit, the nigga did it to me. You get me? That's what starts happening when... It's a snowball effect, but yeah. these people right. have definitely did something, dog. Because I'm going to tell you this. I I know there's some devious women out there. I don't think it's too many, though, that's just going to come out with a bold-faced lie, dog. Nah. I mean, you got people. Um, now, in that one instance with the kids from Mother Polly, that shit was a bold faced lie, but they were having sexual relations, but it was consensual. You have people who will, will attempt when they don't have the smarts to know, like, um, you know, like you're saying, well, I know I had consensual sex with a motherfucker, but still, I don't want people to know. So I'm going to say right. the nigga raped me. Knowing I was giving a motherfucker the pussy all day. But right. now my father or my mother might have found out or some peeps. So now I got to flip the script. Yeah. So. Uh, and what happens too, eight not to cut you off, is some motherfucking sex is consensual, but then you got motherfuckers that want to call the girls all out their name afterwards. Like, yeah. get out, bitch. You know what I mean? They just treat them like shit. And that make That's a motherfucker it. feel some kind of way. My yeah. God. Like I said, it's unfortunate that when you when you in a position of power and and uh status and and you're known around the world, um it's hard to walk that straight line of being Well, like they say, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Um, well, <laughs> it's hard to walk that straight line. You get me um you want to um be a certain motherfucker, like I said. Um, but it's okay to to treat motherfuckers normally. You get me when you in those position. Uh, some people just can't, unfortunately. Man, because I'm gonna tell you this, and now and now I've been the victim of this. Even when you do right by motherfuckers, sometimes. See, everything too. Everything ain't about money. We live in the area where people gain clout for talk. You know for. Just right. saying the strangest shit, right? It could be a bold-faced lie. But if a motherfucker feel like they can come up off of you in any kind of way, they gonna have a million stories about you. Oh, this motherfucker, I don't care how much money you don't gave a motherfucker or how much you don't try to be 100 with them. Some people just are scumbags, bro. That's Some people sure. just ain't shit. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you, man, one of the dudes, one of the super high-profile dudes I was around him, and I didn't really know him. He knew who I was and all this, but he was talking so reckless to me about what he had been doing with some of these girls over the years. Mm -hmm. I was not surprised at all when all the allegations came, because I'm like, you know who I am and everything, but you don't know me, and you're just telling me this stuff like it's nothing? 
And I, I was there as a journalist. I wasn't there to like. Yeah, you could have lit his ass up. Yeah, I was like, when it started coming out, I was like, well, it's some not motherfuckers deserve what they get. It's dog. not surprising. Some motherfuckers, I've seen both sides. I've seen dudes who, who did their thing but was gentlemen about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've seen dudes that did their thing and talk shit. Because then I was like, is this dude, I was like, is he trying to impress me? Is he lying? Is he, like, telling me the truth, like, to, I got but this many girls? But them is the girls. dudes who was in their normal like, life what? wasn't shit. When they was civilians, when they was just regular motherfuckers. Yeah, a lot of niggas like to impress. Um, yeah. So I was trying to figure out why was he impression is 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 a lot in this like, in this what? day and age with amongst your peers. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah, like even Diddy's bodyguard. Now he came out and said that like he's said, not they, covering they, up shit no more. Everybody going, you know, now everybody's going to do the it's money. The floodgates have opened. Everybody's going to do the money grab now. So everybody who feels like they have a little story that they might know now here comes the exploits of. Well, if you don't want me to say nothing about that time, right. nigga, slide me. Because he, he talking about $100,000 and how, but you can give a stranger $3 million. So it's something about money. It's something about something, di you know, something didn't happen for me. Now, in Puff's defense, because I always like to be as neutral as I possibly can, don't none of us know what the fuck happened, right? Puff could have gave this motherfucker all the money in the world, but for some reason, dog, no matter what you may spend, people don't give a fuck. They think if you got money, somehow they they supposed to get some of it. Right. Right. I mean, because you wasn't working for free as security, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure being a security for Puff, you was making a pretty uh, substantial. Well, you probably had check. a couple making a couple hundred thousand a year at least. Okay. I right. Imagine. So, at but. Least. But, like you said, it comes down to, like, why you just didn't, you, like, like. You could have quit. You motherfucker, right. You could have done anything. Because that wasn't the problem. Right. The problem wasn't that. The problem was, um, at one point in time, I probably felt like, why don't you just throw me something? You get me? Yeah. Not, not as far as, you know, the workload or the paycheck or nothing like that, but as just a nigga that you've been knowing for a while and nigga you sitting on like a right. hundred million and I've seen you, you should get, just give I've it. seen I've seen you give away two, three million dollars to strangers and shit. So why you couldn't just, you know, I'm look here. out for a nigga. <laughs> and here. and and that turns into I knew a nigga was always, you know, won't he won't. So let's see what happened now because I got stories too. So basically, you trying to exploit me. You trying to exploit me now because now because of the situation I had with this female right. and whatever, now here comes, like you said, the floodgates are going to open for anybody who feel like, you owe me. Nigga, you owe me. You nigga, owe me. You owe me. Nigga, I, I, I saw you doing, you know, this and that and whatever. So pay me before I spill the beans. Uh -huh. And that's why, man, when you stay ready, you ain't got to be ready. I was always conscious, man. First of all, I've been married for so, for so long, dog. I've always been conscious that wouldn't shit get back to my wife that was embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? I, I really always thought about that. Like, man, you know what? That wouldn't be cool. Not saying I'm not a man. I don't have thoughts and shit. But I always thought about my wife. Yeah. I always as, thought as about you should. You know, I always thought about the shit that can happen because I try to. I got. I tend to treat people how I want to be treated. You know what I mean? Right. I just never want to be a nigga caught up in no crazy shit. That's what I'm saying, dog. I ain't and, never want to get caught up in no scandal. that too. Not saying that I'm a motherfucking. Uh, uh, altar boy, and I've had my share of of, of crazy situations, um, uh, gang banging, what have you, and females, what have you. But I've never tried to put myself in a predicament to where, oh, that's gonna be embarrassing, like a motherfucker, right. or that that's gonna fuck a motherfucker up. If if that shit come out, mm -hmm. you get me. You could lose everything. I, I've never wanted to put myself in those situations, so you know I've always thought about shit. Right. 
you know, should I do that? Should I do that? Should I, you know, should I do some street shit? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, this ain't doing. Should I hook up with nigga and, you know, <clears throat> nah, man. We I, all got our shit, though, eight, and you think about, like, we are all very fortunate. Everybody sitting up in here, man, everybody in this room right now is very fortunate to be able to do what they want to do for a living, right? Yeah. Right. Because I've worked regular jobs before. I, you know, I don't got no problem saying oh, it. Definitely. I don't work regular jobs before. So it's like. Well, I had me a couple of regular jobs before. You know, um, for a motherfucker to yeah. get to do what he doing now, dog, and actually make a living, you know, talking blessing, about stuff man. that he loves is a blessing. So we always have to play the bigger role. Like, I, I'm going to tell you about a situation, right? I had a situation where I get a lot of people that hit me up for help, right? And I had this one motherfucker. Somehow he found out we was recording up at the mansion, right? This one he's recording up in Beverly Hills, right? Mm -hmm. So he comes up there with us for a meeting, right? And the motherfucker, we sitting at a table talking. Now keep in mind, this is the place where I do business at. And there's always cameras going in that motherfucker. Like always. He, his dumb ass didn't know that though. But it's always something being taped. So we go to this one room, have a meeting. And just to give you some context, Von being Jr. is right outside. And two or three of my other homeboys, right? You know, they right outside, right? So it wasn't nothing. It wasn't, it wasn't really, it was just a meeting about his, you know, he, him wanting help. Because for some reason, every motherfucker think if they do a podcast, they're going to make a million dollars, right? <laughs> Everybody, they read this shit, this be lies half the time and overinflated. Man, I heard there's millions of dollars in that shit, right? So I meet with this cat, right? And this cat is in there talking about, man, you know, I got to get put on or whatever like that. And so I'm laughing at him, like, like literally laughing at him, like, because, you know, he get that DMX tough guy voice, like, I'm this and that. And he like, is something funny? And I'm like, yeah, it's hilarious right now. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious right now. I really want to whoop this motherfucker's ass. I really just want to, because, <clears throat> you know, when I get mad, I get to smiling, right? I really want to fuck this dude up, man. Like, really want to beat his ass. So, we get finished with the meeting, right? Whatever, like that, right? Whatever. And his tone kind of changed a little bit. The dude that was with me, like, man, just help him out a little bit, whatever, like that. So, I showed the motherfucker a little thing or two, right? This turns out later that he don't chase me around the room with a mic stand and all type of shit, man. Like, just crazy shit, because he got a little podcast now, right? Mm. So now I'm feeling like the dumbest motherfucker in the world, because I don't help this bum-ass, decrepit, old-ass fucking bum do some shit, right? But it was a lesson for me. And from that moment on, I stopped. I started really recognizing the position I was in and stopped really allowing motherfuckers to have access to me. Right. We can't fuck with everybody, dog, just because of shit like this. And if Puffy is innocent... You got to say half this shit is fault because you can't go around doing what the fuck you want to do and not expect no consequences, right? It's like with this guy. I should have never took a fucking meeting with him. So in a way, it's kind of my fault, and I had to accept that, right? Mm -hmm. Every time I hear this bum-ass motherfucker go online and, and, and tell a lie about me, right? That I, know not, that I know is not true, and anybody that know me know it ain't true, right? And then the lies just get greater and greater. Now is that he don't took a Rolls Royce or something from me, and he don't took five thousand dollars from me for taking somebody's publishing. I ain't never owned nobody's publishing. But long story short is we gotta be careful with who we surround ourselves with, or you could find yourself easily caught up in the fucking trick bag. That's for sure. You can wind up in the motherfucking trick bag, man. So let's say Puffy didn't do none of this shit they talking about. How the fuck you think he feeling now? He thinking I don't gave these, I don't change some of these motherfuckers' lives. Cassie wasn't that fucking talented. Yeah, but you can't, you can't put, you can't do that. You can't do that still because it has nothing to do with her talent. It's about being it's a got person. Got to do with, with oh who, no, it's you got to do person. with what a motherfucker make me do. To be this person. See, and like, I'm not saying, now Puff, I did say if Puff is wrong, dog, he should pay for it. I'm talking from the other side of the, uh, of the coin, right? He gave her a record deal, right? Now, depending, if he went and made her do some sleazy ass shit, 
to get that record deal and her get back more power to her, she should get her motherfucking money. No, I think it's just a situation of of a motherfucker who who abused the, his power, uh, their power. Yeah, his and I'm not just going to just keep going him, 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 because it's a lot of people who abuse their power, men, women, whatever. Yeah. That's just the situation. Now, the one thing that surprised me was the Jimmy Iovine shit. I ain't never known Jimmy to be no sleazy motherfucker. I didn't read enough about that one. I don't know. I don't know. You know, somebody came with some shit, and he he handled it the way I expect he handled it. He's like, I don't know what the fuck this is. And he probably don't. Yeah, deniability. You made, you, you made Jimmy before, right? Yeah. Deniability. You're supposed to deny, like, I mean, because that's what people, you know. I'm pretty I, sure I, Jimmy I don't, don't got him. I don't know shares. what the fuck is going on. I don't know what a person talking about until... You know, rock hard evidence hits hits the you know, and in, in the situation of Puffy, he kind of knew like because in a sense, I've been fucking with this bitch for the la for a while. You get me? And Fifty Cent that that clip of Fifty Cent talking about this like ten years ago resurfaced. Uh, like, I don't know if like, yeah, that. He, he so the kid there's Cuddy no. Stuff. There, they said he was beating on a girl too, though. There's man. no way I can turn around and deny some shit that in the back of my mind I know I did that shit. Right. <laughs> I, I did that shit. There's right. no, there's, there, I don't give a fuck. I gave the bitch a record deal. I put her on a platform. She made a couple of million dollars, all that. But I still was doing some crazy motherfucking shit behind But that's what doors. I say, though. People do shit like that. Like, you know, Cassie wasn't whack, but you know he probably gave her this record deal from the jump just trying to have his way. People flex. How many deals have you seen beautiful girls sign soaring and you knew they record what never coming out? Of course. I mean, but that's... Be, be. But hers came out and she did have a hit. Yeah. I mean, she was a big artist though, still. As far as 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 Bad Boy is concerned, yeah. she was a big artist for Bad Boy. Um, Bad Boy had some hits. She wasn't no, like you said, she, she wasn't, wasn't... like Total or She fake. wasn't no motherfucking, no. She wasn't no Beyonce. To no Total, She wasn't no, no, no motherfucking Evans. Lauren Hill or right, shit right. like that. But as far as being one of those poppy singers at the moment... She had it. She had it. I mean, and I think, too, still, to Aid's point, at the time, people would say whatever they want, but they liked her music... Like, just the average people, like, people would say to me, even though I wasn't super into R&B like that, they would be like, oh, man, the Cassie song is cool. They play it on the radio a lot, whether Paola or whatever, but people would talk about her for her music. Nobody was like, oh, that's Puff's girl, or oh, Puff's messing with her, that's the only reason she got a deal. They actually liked the music. Yeah, I honestly didn't know they was fucking around. That's like, what I'm saying. I, I never knew, like, Till later. she was like... That's my girl, right, or right. whatever you know. But like I said, that's the that's the power position because in the beginning it was probably just on the on the the strength of I could do something with you exactly you me? As, as a far, producer, as a producer, as a record label. Right. You know, you got that look, you got that sound, <clears throat> that two thousand shit that's going around right now in the two thousands. Um, so, but. It does. It's still like I said. When you're in a position of power, and you know you're crooning a motherfucker, and you're whining and dining and right. shit, and you know private jets and you know penthouse suites, and mm -hmm. you know that's gonna get any motherfucker. I don't give a fuck what type of motherfucker. If if you a female and a nigga doing it, it's gonna fascinate the fuck out of you. Just like vice versa. Old motherfucking cougar came along still, and you was about 22, and she was like, Baby, I'm finna, nigga, <laughs> private jets You're like, what and is motherfucking this? What is this? thousand dollar dinners, and nigga, you gonna be, and then nigga, when she, when she get you upstairs to that penthouse, strip, motherfucker. Take all your shit off right now. I'm finna burn your motherfucking balls with this hot wax candle right here. She <laughs> could do all oh, god damn. <laughs> what you gonna do, Steel? 
You 22 years old and this motherfucking cougar flying you all around the country. Nigga, you pulling out. Nigga, while she on tour, nigga, you flossing down Long Beach Boulevard with the homie Fonby and them in the big Rolls Royces and Ferraris and shit. Yeah, nigga but the niggas life. looking at you like, cuh, why you all burnt up on the hands and fingertips and shit? <laughs> <laughs> you gonna be like, oh, it ain't done, cause everything fine. Everything well, nigga, cool. You, I'm, I'm worried, my nigga. You got all kinds of scars. Burn and shit, but we pushing the roads. <laughs> you, you pushing the roads and shit, and can't even push the pedal because your toes all burnt up. She got you walking on hot. Oh, oh, oh. She got you walking. <laughs> That's she terrible. got you walking on hot that's, coals that's and shit, terrible. and you like, oh, nigga, that is shit, nigga. But look at this Rolls Royce we push in this. You going to take a gang of shit, and nigga, when you 30, and you got some PTSD, and you looking and can't back, sleep like, man, night, what was, was I shit? doing? You're like, fuck this motherfucker, it's a law right you see now. The, and you what see this doing? cougar sitting up in her big pit house all on TV, running game. You're going to be like, that bitch put me through a gang of shit, nigga. Yeah. I still have nightmares when she used to burn my balls with cigarette butts. <laughs> Some motherfuckers is just a, you know what? Some people really are just fucking abusive, dog. And when they get power, they can't handle that. <clears throat> nah. Some what, can, what you, like, again... Nigga, I ain't got nothing. Right. I'm trying to get my career off the ground. I would sue the hell out there, ass. I right What's the name of that thing? Is that lawsuit still cracking? <laughs> Brian, <laughs> this nigga gonna come in here limping and shit. Like, what's wrong with you today, my nigga? Oh, nigga, it ain't nothing. This nigga got a black eye and bird holes all in his <laughs> Like, still, what happened to your, your ones, man? Your Air Force ones, they got a hole in them, man. That shit. Like a cigarette burn. But nigga, that nigga pulling up in the bin. That nigga, that nigga getting <laughs> dropped off in a helicopter around this motherfucker. You know how, what? How you gonna deny that shit? I'm gonna tell y'all, though, <laughs> You gonna come in this motherfucker with a neck brace on and everything. Like, nigga, I'm, I'm good. I'm cool. This is definitely the era, though, dog, to oh, where man. anything that you did possibly in the past, man, because they tearing Will Smith's ass up right now. Mm. Mm-hmm. Dude, that came back. I ain't go go into too much detail on that man, but they doing a way wheel dirty, dog. Mm-hmm. He got to go through his wife out there talking about Tupac all the damn time, and now revelations coming out about him, man. I'm gonna tell you, if these motherfuckers is lying, dog, they need to go to jail, dog. Like I said, some people, um, it's unfortunate. Like when you when you put yourself out there as a celebrity, uh, <laughs> you don't get no peace. Yeah, man, you don't why. get no peace, man, and and that's why you have to walk a very straight line, man. You mm. can't, out, man. You can't be playing with no butts. You can't be out <laughs> mingling with the other parties and sides. You can't have nothing that a motherfucker will take like a. a a piece yeah. like a thread, nigga, and just next thing you know, they done wove gotcha. a whole sweater out that gotcha. motherfucker. Hell yeah, we gonna you make up all kind of shit, nigga. A motherfucker take a piece of ink, and next thing you know, they done wove a whole outfit out that motherfucker out of and just I'm gonna shit. I'm gonna tell you something. In the era we living in now, half of these motherfuckers out there, dog, believe anything that they hear. Of course. Well, the name anything that they hear. The name of the game right now is not the truth. It's just putting a story out there. Right. I want to be the first motherfucker to tell the story. I don't give a fuck if that shit is true or not. If it is, if if it is true, even I'm better. On point. If it ain't, oh well, my bad. But that's 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 what and that's a dangerous. That's game. the content of our society right now. Um, I don't gotta know if. The nigga is really gay or not? I just want to put it out there, and I just want to be. And they, people just want to be entertained, so they go and now. Even when the truth come out, you still go have motherfuckers. They won't never say nothing about the truth. Oh my bad, I want to talk right. about this dude like a dog. Oh no, because it's too late then. Because the truth coming out really is it really the Everybody truth? Everybody got their mind. I, I don't. I don't believe that. And the motherfucker then took a thousand lie detector tests and everything, and you'll still have a group of motherfuckers that going hmm. Hmm, I don't know if I, 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 I buy that. You right. get me? I don't know. It's 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 
It's not about the but truth. But like you remember though, dog, when we first started doing this shit and you had the one nigga that was trying to come with the little shit. Mm. And I told you, dog, address it this one time and leave it alone because you are not go win on the internet. That's why I don't respond to motherfuckers because you're not going to win no battle on the internet because motherfuckers don't care about the truth. All they care about is getting giggles and living in the fantasy. Right. This shit is like a motherfucking sitcom or some shit, dog. Yeah. It's like a sitcom or some shit that motherfuckers don't think that you got real feelings and shit like that, so they just run with a motherfucking lie. Because the thing is, to everything we're saying, that type of situation, there's no accountability. You just gotta anonymous. be. A, you just gotta have. You just gotta have a, a, a stronger armor than motherfuckers. Yeah, you gotta man. start suing man, motherfuckers. You, it, not really that, man. Cause you gotta let. Gotta let it. Let, 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 let it roll, do man. What they do. Yeah. The, the thing of how to kill that shit is not by fucking with the shit, yeah. because by by yeah. even fucking with it, you letting that nigga know he winning, because. I'm still, I'm, st I, I'm still affected by that shit. Right. I'm still affected by it because even after a year, I'm still gonna talk about this motherfucker. Still thinking. That's about letting it. a motherfucker know on the other end. They got. I you. got you. You know what though? Got Some you. shit. I'll be sitting up here lying like a motherfucker if I ain't said I ain't want to put hands and feet on motherfuckers, dog. Of course. I want to whoop. I, I wake up at night dreaming about fucking some of these yeah, niggas but up, that, dog. But, 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 but then that puts you in that puffy situation. Now you finna be exploited right. by doing that shit. Yeah. You gonna be exploited. You that shit the, right you there, crossed the line. you can't do shit about that. A nigga got the right to call you a punk motherfucker every day if he wanted to. They got that right. You going to go fight every motherfucker and shoot every motherfucker That's that real. go, you a punk motherfucker? That's your opinion, homie. You ain't got... Nigga, you don't know me. Right. <laughs> nigga, you can yell to the high heavens all the rest of your days, but I'm going to flip it on you. I'm going to watch you talk about me every day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch you talk about me every day. Right. I'm fucking you up because you can't get me out your system. While I'm sitting right here doing I'm, what I'm, I'm supposed to I'm still on do, my square. I'm still kicking it. I'm here. You still talking about me every motherfucking day. Right. So that let me know, nigga, I win. <laughs> you win I you win. win. I win. Yeah, but if yeah. I'm finna get up here, just like the shit I've been talking about the last couple of days, mm -hmm. if I get up here and keep talking about what that shit is, they win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They win. That's some real shit. Me by going, ha, 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 click. Yeah, you know what though, dog? Like the thing is, cause me and um, me and the homie Glass, you know I manage Glass and Malone, right? Just the shit that people in the ram or the public space go to is a motherfucker, dog. Yeah. Because you don't want to acknowledge that bullshit, right? Mm-hmm. But you'll be having motherfuckers behind the scenes burnt up, dog, talking about making moves. And it's like, dog, you tripping, now, man? Like that <laughs> shit ain't that fucking serious. Yeah, you know it's, what I mean? it's it's never that serious, and it ain't that it's serious to where I'm gonna involve my people to. You're not gonna make that call. Yeah, man. Nah, not man. You ain't, be the thing, though, you ain't right it, homie. You ain't you know what be the thing is though? What motherfuckers don't realize is that other people that ain't in entertainment that may love motherfuckers, right? Be seeing this shit. And they may take it upon themselves to do some shit. Now you got to reel that in because it's still going to come back to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, always, it's dog. dog it you don't matter. You're in a situation, dog. You, you in a situation any, where you can't win. The best time I was in the, ignore any, that shit. Anytime I was in a situation like that, whether it was rap beef or whatever, whatever, and motherfuckers, oh, man, come on, nigga. I could dig it. You ain't got nothing to do with it. And I'd be like, don't. Just don't, right. because at the end of the day, because of what's going on, it's gonna come right back in your lap. A motherfucker could be, yep. a motherfucker be driving on the freeway, have a blowout and kill itself. It's gonna come back to you. Didn't y'all have beef? Right. What you do to a nigga tire? Where were you? 
Where you get me? Last night. What you do? What you? What you do to a nigga tire? Because all that nigga tire been driving all good for the last ten years, and next thing you know, we see you two niggas on the internet going back and forth, and next thing you know, his tire done blew up and he dead. What you do to the tire? And you know what's gonna happen? All the motherfuckers out there gonna say such and such. They gonna make conspiracy videos. Yep. And you and you and you could you I had nothing to do, but it's still just because of the interaction of the bullshit. Right. It's gonna fall back into your lap. Now you got his exploits from his people wanting to do something because now my nigga done passed and now the last they motherfucker. looking for somebody to be mad. The last motherfucker. That's how we used to do shit. Oh, who's the last motherfucker he had beef with? Oh, you? Oh, nigga, now we got beef with you. Right. Huh? Yeah, that's how it worked. That's how it worked, nigga. The last motherfucker that my homie had beef with was you, so now I got beef with you. Right. That shit crazy as a motherfucker. That's how shit. That's hey. why... I, one thing I want to know before we wrap up, man, I see you wearing your um, fly-ass motherfucking MC8 wear. Yeah, I got this shit, you know. We got some shit cracking. Uh, so what's the website people can go to if they want to order you that You go MC8 to, um, what's the shit? Uh, Official8clothing.bitcartel, bitcartel.com. That's the website. So www.official8clothing.bitcartel. We got T-shirts. We got hoodies. Hats, we're gonna have all kind of shit. Keychains, beach towels, man, whatever you whatever whatever your MC8 fix, your menace fix, CMW fix, whatever, man. We got yeah, it. You crack. can use them beach towels to smack your girl in the ass, to pop her on the ass like this at home. Yeah, you know, people go to the beach, they wanna lay out on the menace towel or the AWAX towel or whatever. Or well, we got it cracking, man. Yeah, we do. And that's another episode, and we out of here. Jill. Pinocchio, we gon' tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Extra chronic, this is not your.